The next speaker is Sebastian Fitzner from Julia Hub, who's going to talk about something that really needs no introduction. Most of us probably use it every day, if not every minute of every day. Update on the Julia VS Code extension. Hey everyone, I'm talking about the Julia extension for VS Code today, and specifically about what's new, what has happened over the last year, since last JuliaCon, when we also gave that talk. Turns out, <laughs> not much has changed. <laughs> Um, neither David Antoff nor myself had too much time to spend on increasing the feature set of the extension, although it has been kept, maintained, um, and as such still works, even with recent July versions like 1.9. Um, however, there is one notable exception to this. Um, some development has been put into uh, test item runner.jl and the test integration of the extension. So if you're among the folks who write tests for the packages, then that's good news, uh, because uh, with this integration, you don't have to run all of your tests at the same time and can instead you know, pick out certain test items, um, features you want to test, and you know, fix your tests for. That, that is a sidebar item in VS Code. Uh, I can show that to you later. All right, um, so yeah, I'll just pivot this talk a little bit and we'll talk about the VS Code extension, its eternals, the good, the bad, the ugly, for some definition of good, bad, and ugly. The good is pretty good, the bad and ugly are not all that bad or ugly, um, but there are certainly some problems. All right, um, some good stuff. Code execution, plotting, all of that works and it works pretty well if you want to use it at least. Uh, we have inline evaluation. You can um, plot your results. All of this is fully dynamic if you're using the right backend for plots or if you're using WebGL Maki. Um, you can run the profiler. Um, you've heard to talk about profilers. This is just Julia's stock standard sampling profiler. But at least you get a nice GUI for it and some integration into the editor so you can click back and forth and see the relative impact of certain lines of code. Uh, we also support the location profiler, which, um, well, is a fairly new thing, right? It got introduced in Julia 1.9 and works very similarly, at least in regards to the uh, integration and the extension. The test framework I already briefly talked about. Um, obviously, it's not a well-advertised feature, judging by Stefan's reaction to it. Um, so we'll have to do something about it, but please feel free to use it. Uh, ask questions uh, on the usual channels, if you have any. Uh, IntelliSense, which means code completions, documentation for um, functions in, or methods or objects in the editor. Um, all of that works fairly well in most cases. Um, some caveats are uh, around as well, which I'll talk about in a minute. And generally, this goes into the implementation a bit. Um, all of these static features are powered by language server.jl, which is a Julia package we wrote. And well, that's sort of the back end that powers all of the static analysis, um, IntelliSense, all of that good stuff. It's a pretty good package. It conforms to the spec, which is good. And um, yeah, it serves its purpose. Some of its dependencies, however, will show up later in this talk, which I guess you know in which category that will be. Um, yeah, another thing I'd kind of like to talk about is the debugger. I've tentatively put it into the good category, uh, even though at the um, survey talk this morning, people talked about the debugger being too slow and so on and so forth. I mean, true, but also, what can you do, right? It kind of works. <clears throat> All right, um, let's also talk about a few bad things. It's not entirely clear what the distinction between bad and ugly is, but the title was catchy, so. Okay, um, false positives, correctness. This has um, bitten uh, a few people. Uh, 
we have some issues with correctness of static analysis. Some of that is due to bugs in our code base. Some of it is due to the fact that Julia code is fairly hard to statically analyze. But yeah, what's that? <laughs> um, so yeah, you frequently end up with these like 12K plus problem badges in VS Code, which makes the feature basically completely unusable for large code bases because I mean, who has time to look through 12K issues? Macro handling. Macro handling is tricky. I don't think we can do it correctly in the general case. But if you have like this at parameters macro from modeling toolkit, then that introduces bindings, which we should in theory be able to propagate through the rest of your code. In practice, we can't, we just give up, except for like three special case macros. What else? Environment handling. Uh, this is also a bit of a pain point. Um, in particular, we are not handling stacked environments correctly. Some people have uh, expressed interest in us handling load path, which you know allows you to sort of side load packages outside of your environment. Um, and something for the testing enthusiast among us, the test directory currently doesn't get any IntelliSense. We disabled it because it, for the most part, doesn't work in the current implementation. But that's actually really annoying. Um, performance is sort of adequate if you have small code bases for some definition of small. Uh, for large code bases, it gets pretty bad. There are even some pathological cases like uh, generated Julia files where the language server basically shuts down completely and you don't get any updates or you get updates on the order of like 20 seconds or whatever, which is pretty bad if you want to run that update loop for every keystroke. Most of us probably type a bit faster than that. Um, all right, a few ugly points. Um, and when you think about ugly, then we usually think about code, right? Um, so there's some ugly code in our um, REPL handling. Basically, we have some issues with interrupting, inter uh, integrating interrupts into the extension, basically. That's not just due to Windows not having any signal handling. It's also due to the fact that, yeah, it's a bit unclear how to interrupt Julia code properly from another process without killing our uh, own functionality in the process. Um, extending REPL functionality is a bit hacky, right? There are some hooks you can use to extend REPL functionality, but in general, it doesn't feel great. And the REPL API, I mean, there's no API for the REPL, right? We are mucking around in Julia internals here. Um, then there's also the issue around dependency in injection. So we have to run some code in the Julia process that the user starts their REPL. And we need to take a lot of care not to prevent them from loading another version of a package we're depending on. All of that also feels a bit iffy because it sort of sidesteps Julia's package loading. All right, now dependencies of language server.jl. We have CST parser.jl, which parses all of your code into a concrete syntax tree, and then that allows us to run our analysis logic on top of that. That package is fairly hard to maintain, and crucially, it's not the reference parser, or well, one of the two, right? We have Julia syntax nowadays, which I very much hope to use in the future. Um, static lint.jl is um, a package built on top of csdparser.jl, and that's what handles a bunch of logic around resolving scopes, bindings, providing completions, providing, well, linting, it's in the name. Um, that package is even harder to maintain than csdparser because it's uh, less straightforward. And there are a bunch of correctness issues in our scope and binding handling logic. And it also kind of has the same issue as CST part in that it's not the reference implementation, right? The Julia compiler or steps before the compiler all handle this correctly, but we don't really have a way to hook into it currently. All right, just briefly, what's in the future? Um, some high priority improvements I'd like to spend some more time on is, well, as said before, replacing CST parts of Julia syntax, um, and then rewriting parts of static lint on top of that, just for correctness sake. 
um, speculative improvements around features. Um, there's been some uh, asks around plots, making them better, and the debugger, of course. All right, if you want to help out or complain, feel free to find me or reach out to us on Slack, GitHub, or Discourse. All right, just on time. Thank you.